Welcome back. Well, for all you Audi fans, I have a really naughty cat here who has been looking for attention in the worst way. I have boxes, and of course, he's delighted by the prospect. So I expect we are going to be seeing something of him as this video wears on. Now, yesterday, I started doing an unboxing from Colleen, and today, we're going to finish that unboxing, but also, I have some video for you from the last time I was at Bedford, and I picked up a very interesting piece, so I wanted to tag that in with this, even though they're only marginally related, mostly because I wanted to show you how to identify these things. All right, when we come back. To the box. This is the third of three boxes that Colleen sent, and what I did in advance was I opened the packages up. That's because when Audie was with me for the last unboxing, he got all the bubble wrap. Oh, he was thrilled, and it took me like 20 minutes to gather it all up when we were done, and I thought, I don't know if I'm ready for this again. So I sort of put all the bubble wrap into a large box. Now he's been in and out of that box. And of course he's kicking bubble wrap out every time he goes, but it keeps him away from the China. So, and that's my goal today. Can I keep the cat away from the China? We'll see. I think I'm being ridiculously optimistic. So let's start with this little cutie pie. Now, this is a little mini teapot. It is unmarked and it has this up. It has a traditional rattan handle. The handle is not in great shape, but it's still working which means it's not in terrible shape either. Now, let me see if I can adjust this light a little. Okay, I'm going to be in semi-darkness, but at least you're going to be able to, let's see, how can we do this here? I'm trying to find a spot where I can show you the colors of this piece. How about we try like that? Yeah, that's better. Um, the problem with this piece, which of course is not a problem, is there's so much gilding that every light, including the very dim outdoors light, we've got a very overcast day, everything is reflecting in the gilding. And as I say, the fact that it's got heavy gilding isn't really a negative. In terms of the piece, that's a positive. But this is our wonderful little pot. The design is very Japanese. Um, I would have to say, I believe this is a Japanese piece, even though it's unmarked. And even though, let's see if you can see that green, there we go, yeah. That green color is much more characteristic of Chinese porcelain than Japanese. Still, the design and all the gilding leads me to say Japanese. Very cute little mini teapot. Um, we're just going to tuck that back in. Uh, we have there's some other goodies in here. Um, this is uh, oh, Chiparamachi. There we go. Um, major Japanese importer. Very, very pretty lusterware cup. And it's not just about the lusterware and the gilding. Uh, Chikaramachi, this is one of the reasons it's a popular company. And if you ever go through 
listings like on eBay, Etsy. Usually if the piece is Chikaramachi, they'll put that in the listing because the work is fine. This is high quality work. It's a beautiful design. All of this scroll work is all in gold. And so pieces like this tend to sell more quickly and at higher prices than other pieces. Now, keep in mind that among serious collectors of Japanese porcelain, there are other um, manufacturers that will be much more popular than this. But for the average collector, not, not, in other words, the people who are collecting because they like it because it's pretty, not the people who would be looking to buy two or three hundred year old pieces, for example. Um, the average collector is going to go for this over almost any other brand. Um, the, the very serious advanced collectors have a couple of companies they'll put on the top of the list, but that doesn't detract from either the beauty or the value of this piece. Now, I am quite certain that we have a piece that complements this in one of the other boxes. So we'll have to check on that later um, because right now we're gonna take a look at this. All right, can you see what this is? Uh, this is a grain of rice pattern teacup, relatively modern. Now it's a teacup with a handle. Um, I tend to pick these up every now and then, and these are relatively modern. Um, they are probably from the 1990s, and uh, one of the shops, the little booths at Bedford Antiques, does sell some of these pieces from time to time. So when I pick them up, I know I am picking up vintage, but not antique pieces, but I pick them up for the grain of rice pattern, which is very, very popular. Now, I say this every time we talk about this, but I know that not everybody watches every single video, so this is going to be news to some of you. Even though the legend is that they embedded rice in the clay, and then the rice burns away in the firing to create this design, it's really not true. They actually just cut out the little rice-shaped patterns and fill it with a translucent glaze. That's how they do this. Um, very attractive Chinese cups, very popular uh, among, um, yeah. among, again, this, we're talking the average uh, China collector, not the, the super high-end China collector, but very popular among the average China collector. And we have two of these, and this is great because, as I say, I get these without the handles, and I use them. They are very popular when I put together tidbit trays. Um, they, they really are. So I'm happy to have some with handles as well. And as it happens, like I said, I know where to get matching pieces so I can go in and pick up saucers or bread and butter plates for usually it's more than I would pay for something this new but it's still about what I would pay for any random yes baby any random um, bit of china that was going to go into a tidbit tray now I assume you just saw Audie which is important because as you can tell, he wanted to be seen. So let's see what else we have in this little box. So, just as I was saying, I know where to pick up the plates. Well, looks like I don't need to because we have three of these matching grain of rice plates. And this is really good because they are going to make very nice cup and saucer tidbit trays. Additionally, um, a saucer like this is going to go very nicely at the top of another blue and white Japanese or Chinese tray. Here's why. The design in the center, now this is a Chinese piece and the grain of rice pattern is Chinese, not Japanese. But if you look at that little flower 
and I'm going to assume it's a chrysanthemum. The styling on this is very Japanese. So a piece like this will, will um, it'll complement uh, blue and white Chinese pattern China, blue and white Japanese pattern China. But as you know, because I say this all the time, uh, things like willow wear, which is the classic blue and white design, they come from Japan, they come from China, they come from England, and I think I picked up most recently a piece from Belgium, of all places. So, the, the designs, once the designs are out there, there's no telling who is going to copy them out. All right, let me get this box set aside, and then we're going to go into the next one. I said it over. I know Audie was right over there, and he's, in fact, he's only sitting two feet away, so he may well come back for it, but I don't know if you've noticed from the changing angle of the light, it went from dark, 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 to suddenly there's, you know, light beams all over the place. Audie is right now focused on catching the sunlight, so I think he's going to be out of our hair for a while. So, Let's take a look at this. And what we have in this box appears to be more Imari. This is beautiful. This is an Imari style, but it's from the Noritake China Company. So the fact is that it's, it's an Imari design. Let's just put it that way. And since it's made by a Japanese company, as far as I'm concerned, that counts, but it's a little stylized, a little different, beautiful, but it has our basic Imari color scheme, that sort of cobalt blue and terracotta color. Uh, this is terrific. This is a nice little bowl. We're looking at about um, six inches. Um, got a pretty little gold band here. And this is another piece that would be great on a tidbit tray. And I do think that's where uh, the Imari pieces that I got from Colleen are going to end up on tidbit trays. And the reason for this is I don't usually do tidbit trays in uh, Imari. And part of the reason for that is Imari China, that pattern, is so crazy expensive that the, the tidbit trays would just be priced out of the ballpark. So, in fact, um, what was it? Royal Darby, Royal Derby, something like that. China Company, Royal Darby. I'll look it up at some point. It's a China Company came out with a pattern called Old Imari. They came out with this pattern in the late 60s, early 70s. Again, I can look that up and see if I can get you an exact date on this. Even that China pattern, cups and saucers are going for $70, $80 for a single cup and a single saucer. Um, and that's the price people are asking for it, and they're getting it. Imari is just an insanely popular pattern. And if you go on uh, eBay or Etsy and you look for a plate, just an Imari plate, to get something even brand new, okay, even made in the U.S., not Japan, pieces like Andrea by Sadek that were made uh, to Western specifications, they were made overseas but they were made to Western specifications for places like Neiman Marcus and Saks and the other high-end department stores. Even those pieces are running $20, $30 a plate. It's scary. But as you know, uh, I just lucked into a number of very lovely Imari pieces which means I am going to be able to do something with them um, because ordinarily, as I say, it's cost prohibitive. But, you know, we've got holiday giveaways coming up. Now here, let's take a look at this. This one 
simply has a Made in Japan tab. Uh, the tag looks to be right around mid-century. Yes, I've got you. All right. Well, do you want to come over here? What do, what do you want to do? Excuse me a minute. Oh, come on. Okay. Okay, we are back. Um, he needed a little bit of attention, and he was determined to get it. And he doesn't care that I'm filming. So why don't you say hello to everybody? Make yourself useful. Show them you're a star. Well, what do you want? You want to go down here? Well, go this way, please. Please. There we go. And he just turned around and walked right back. What can I say? All right. Back to what we were doing. Mid-century tag made in Japan. So pieces like this traditionally went for considerably less than the other kinds of Imari pieces. Not true anymore. Like I said, even if it has a, a British China company's tag on it, or if it was clearly made to U.S. specifications, they're still going for big bucks. But there was a time when you could get good deals on these. Yes, I know, but please don't crawl up my back again. Um, yeah, I may have to start this video all over again. Um, anyway, you could get very good deals and you still can from time to time, especially if like this, the piece has that little made in Japan tag. Uh, so keep your eyes open for it. Watch for this pattern because even if you don't collect it, you don't want to do anything with it, you get a piece like this for a couple of bucks at a thrift store, you put it on eBay, and it's going to sell. Believe me. Now, this is a beautiful little plate. It's about six inches. This would make a very nice plate for the top of a tidbit tray. And as you know, I have larger pieces to go lower down. This... Well, this is, let me show you these together. These are both Imari, and they are both unmistakably Imari, too. And look at that. Very different styles. But anyone who knows Imari is going to look at the two of these and say, oh yeah, Imari, no question about it. And we'd spoken about this yesterday when I said Imari is very well known for these sort of um, cross-hatch designs in the background. Um, this one, obviously, because this is not a standard plate, it's, um, it's square and the corners are cut and so on, uh, we have a lot of negative space, a lot of white behind this garniture pattern. Very sweet piece. Nevertheless, you look at the border and it is pure Imari. Now, let's take a look at this. Can you see right in here all this uh, gilding? Let's see if I can move it so that, yeah, there. So you can see the gilding, but it, it's not reflecting the light too badly. These intricate designs, Imari was very well known for it. So even though these pieces are quite dissimilar, as you can see, they would look great together on a tidbit tray. Um, they would look great together just sitting on a table. So Now, let me pull this out because I had... I, this is one of the three Imari plates that Colleen sent yesterday. As you can see, very different from the others, and I'm going to show you because I, I have another Imari plate here. This is sort of more classically Imari. We've got our, our intricate little designs here. But notice, they're both Imari. No question about it. They would look great together. They're the wrong size to combine. But just about all of the Imari patterns look very good with one another. Um, mostly because you have the uh, terracotta and cobalt 
again, the same thing here. The same basic color scheme. And because they're Japanese porcelain, you will end up with uh, the same motifs. Uh, the flowers, the vines, um, the birds. So, again, if you find a Mari out in your travels, remember, these are pieces that are going to go reasonably high. Oh, and here, let me tell you this trick, too. Because one of the ways you can um, judge what the going prices are for items on eBay is when you go onto eBay, they have a whole bar running down the left side of the page. And it will say things like, um, do you want free shipping? Do you want a buy it now? Do you want something from North America only? Just check all these boxes and it refines your search. Well, one of the features allows you to refine your search by price. And when you go in to the Amari section, the lowest price you can use to refine your search is under $35. Now, if you go somewhere else, if you go into um, Japanese plates, for example, just as an example, Japanese plates, I believe that one, the lowest price is under $17. So what that tells you is the lower priced Japanese plates in general are usually selling for about half as much as the lowest price Imari plates. It gives you a sense of how expensive these items are. And I didn't know if you would ever notice that. And certainly pay attention to it now that you know. But as I said, when you go in for Amari, it's $35, which means they basically consider that rock bottom pricing. All right, let's take a look at what else we have in this box. Um, these are really cute. We have a couple of these. Uh, these are unmarked. It appears, hmm, I'm not sure if that's transferware or hand painted. Hand painted. Okay. We just had to feel the flowers. Probably European. I've got a pair of these uh, that Colleen sent. Um, and what we're looking at here are, I guess you would have to say, uh, fruit bowls um, or snack bowls some sort of small bowl um, because we've got a pair of them so they were probably designed to be part of a dinner service. Dessert bowls maybe definitely an unusual shape. Very pretty. And we have a similar piece. Gosh, this is lovely. What are you? Um, Germany. Beautiful, iridescent lusterware. I don't know if you can see that. This is the kind of lusterware that was really popular coming out of Western Europe. Uh, Germany, Austria, Bavaria, uh, which is Germany. Um, and uh, I was going to say Czechoslovakia. That doesn't exist anymore. My gosh, I give my age away at the drop of a hat, don't I? Uh, the Czech Republic. Um, this was where they really excelled in lusterware. This wonderful, like, oil slick iridescence. Um, it's got a beautiful little design here, too. Again, this is a European piece, and it really sort of screams European. Beautiful. And it seems to be the same type of bowl. I'm going to just say they are oval candy dishes. That's what I'm going to call them. So, let's see. All right. That's what we have from Colleen. Now, very quickly, I want to talk to you about a piece I picked up at Bedford last week. So, let me show you the film. Now, I take you into this booth. 
almost every time I come to Bedford. This is the tiny little bathroom-sized booth where the prices are all over the place, but I hardly ever leave here empty-handed. So let's take a look at this. It's a pretty little green pitcher. Two dollars. It's not marked, well, I'll have to take a close look at that and see if that is actually a faded mark. Um, my best guess would be American made, but it's got a Christmassy look to it. So, definitely coming home with me. This is a no-brainer. This is $2. Um, art painted bowl. No. Take a look at this. This is an old Chinese piece. Um, it's very similar to things like um, Audie's water dish, for example. It's a heavy stoneware. Um, and this, usually, these pieces, just in case you're interested, would have a turquoise lining and very often just some odd little designs. Uh, and the designs are everything. I have some with calligraphy designs. I have some with chickens. That's an old Chinese stoneware piece in perfect condition for $2. And to give you some idea of the value of that, the last piece like that I picked up was a little bit smaller, and I believe I paid $35 for it, and I spent a month congratulating myself on the good deal. So, oh yeah, that's why I keep coming into this booth. Okay, here's the piece. Now, as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what it was. How did I know? Okay. I mentioned that I had picked up a slightly smaller bowl for $35, and I was just thrilled with myself for the deal. This is more typical of what these Chinese stoneware pieces look like with this beautiful turquoise wash on the interior. Very thick glaze. You can see it's just mm, shiny. The pieces are heavy and thick. But here we go. They have these odd little designs on the outside. Oh, and when I say odd, let me give you an example. That is a chicken. It took me a very long time. I mean, really, would you have known that was a chicken? I had to actually just stare at that for a while before I figured it out. Oh, and this, this thing... I believe is a flower. I thought it was a mushroom cloud. I thought, oh my God, this is like over the bikini atoll or something. What are they thinking? Very um, primitive designs around the sides. This piece, well, you can see the marks. So this is an antique Chinese piece. These pieces were rarely made for export. So that Chinese mark, that we didn't get a lot of that stuff. This was the domestic China from the country. This is what people ate their morning post toasties or whatever it is they, ah, gosh, I have no idea what they eat for breakfast in China. I know in Vietnam it's pho, and, uh, which is great by the way, and if you've never had it, Get yourself down to a Vietnamese restaurant. Pho is fantastic. But it's breakfast food in Vietnam. Um, and for us, it's a lunch or dinner food. So who knows? But this would have been an ordinary household bowl. Nothing special, nothing great. Hence these sort of rustic designs. Now, when I saw this bowl, of course, they are the same octagonal shape, only this one has more pronounced corners. This one has eight distinct sides. It's just not sharp corners. 
and when we start looking at the design, you can start to see the similarities. It, it wraps around. They, this one has a chicken. This one has a blackbird. You've got a branch. But here's the real giveaway. These little curly cues. Um, in the publishing industry, they call them dingbats. They're little designs that uh, signal the end of a chapter or the end of a section. Uh, so that's what I always think of these as. I'm sure the Chinese call them something else. Little designs like that. Very, very typical of the designs you will find on these bowls. This one doesn't have any. What it has instead is a little dragonfly. So we see the design starts wrapping around. We go to the back and we've got the dragonfly here. Our design starts wrapping around. We go to the back and we've got our two little dingbats here and here. That made it extremely clear to me that it was a Chinese piece and in fact, a Chinese piece similar to this one. The great part of it, of course, is $2. Um, I have several bowls like this. And please don't write in to scold me in the comments. Uh, what I uh, collected those bowls for was uh, my dog. My, now my dog has passed. But that was my dog's food and water dish, a set of very large Chinese stoneware bowls. But because Audie always stole the dog's water, he would never drink his own water. It was so much more fun when he took it from the dog. I still keep the dog's bowls out. She's been gone two years now. Her bowls are still out. Audie is still stealing from the water dish. And when I have trouble getting him to eat, sometimes he can be funny about eating, you know. I just put his food in the dog's dish because he used to love to steal her food too. He didn't like it. He wouldn't eat it. He'd chew on it, spit it out, and that was it. But he did it to annoy the dog. But I should, I'll dig out a picture. Audie loved the dog. This was Audie's dog, and he misses her terribly. So anyway, that's what I got these little bowls for to begin with. And Audie had a bowl like this at one time, but he killed it when he was chasing a mouse. So he now has a bowl that's clad in brass so that if he does chase a mouse again, knocks his bowl down, he's not going to do too much damage. Um, I got this bowl as the, you know, if he's a good boy, he'll get a nice Chinese bowl. But I have this one now as a backup. So... I did want you to see this because I wanted you to, to understand how it is that these two pieces are essentially the same and what you need to look for in order to spot them. Remember, the same shape doesn't have to have the, sh uh, this one has the sharp corners, this one doesn't have to. Uh, this one has the uh, turquoise wash, this one has a, a little flower, but you look for the style of the painting, and in this case, that little oddball piece here on the back, and you know, this one has them too, the shape, and as you can see, the shape is virtually identical. Um, oh, also, when you look at these, if you see this in person, you will be able to tell immediately it's, it's uneven, it's been hand thrown. Same with this. So that was my big find at Bedford last week. Uh, even if it wasn't for the fact that that's not going to be sold, that's going to go into my own collection, that, that's going to get set aside <laughs> in case a bad cat ever decides to be a good cat and needs a special little reward. But because you can go in to places like Bedford, you can spend $2.00 on something today if I put that that bowl is in perfect condition by the way if I put that bowl on eBay right now it would probably go for 40 to 50 dollars as I say 
when I got the other one for 35, I was just like, ooh. So, yes, that's about what it would go for. You can make money, even if you're not buying at thrift shops or yard sales. You go into antique malls, you can find things. And that little booth, uh, and we go in there every single time because I can always pull out something interesting. That little booth is about the size of my bathroom. It really is. This is a tiny, tiny booth. But every time I go in there, I come out with something new. All right, I'm afraid we've probably gone a little long for it today. My apologies, but I did want you to see it all. All right, I will, uh, I will be back this evening for a Just Chatting video. And then, uh, again, Thursday evenings and back to thrifting on the weekend. So, in the meantime, remember... The giveaways are still going on over at the Sumi's Angels Facebook page. Go check them out. And we are going to take a look at a little slideshow on our way out. All right, I will see you all later. Thank mm -hmm. you.